In the Rode Roadcaster Pro 2, there are many examples of Rode using this symbol with a zero and a slash through it. It has different meanings on different places within the Roadcaster Pro 2 and in the Rode logo itself, so we're going to walk through systematically defining what it means in each example that you're going to find it. Now, first of all, the spoiler here is that Rode basically co-opted this from an industry standard button that is used to invert polarity on a channel strip or a signal. This helps to correct phase issues. We're going to come back to this concept in a minute. So this is a common symbol that you will find on all types of audio mixers for that purpose. Now, Rode put this in their logo. My assumption here is that it comes from a point of view of they're trying to say that they think differently. They're inverted compared to other people in the audio industry. They've inverted their philosophy. In Apple terms, they have a similar branding with that whole Think Different campaign. My guess is that that's why Rode included the symbol inside their logo. Now you'll find this logo in all kinds of different places in the Rode logo itself, in the Rode Control app, the companion app for the Rodecaster Pro 2. You see it as the main logo for that program. But also it's in a different place on the Rodecaster. You'll find it up in the top corner on your touch screen if you're not recording. So if we click that, what do we find? We find default show settings where you can import, export, set up a new show, all that type of thing. So that's pretty straightforward. This probably is still co-opted into Rode's branding, and they're saying if you're setting up a Rode show on the Rodecaster Pro 2, we're going to use this symbol to define that as well. But then they kind of run into a problem when they want to use it on a channel strip, because if you're new to audio and you don't know what that symbol means, and you've seen the symbol in the logo, you've seen it in the show setup mode, it can be really confusing when you also see it in the channel strip. So why is there something to do with the show setup buried in the channel strip? Well, this is what I was talking about before. This is actually a very common industry standard symbol for inverting the polarity of your signal. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, polarity and phase are related. You run into this problem quite a bit if you're putting two microphones on a single source. Some really common examples of when you'd want to invert the polarity to fix phase are if you're putting two microphones on an acoustic guitar, if you're putting two microphones on a grand piano, or the worst offender is probably putting two different microphones on a snare drum. Now, why is this a problem? If we look at the example of putting two different microphones on a snare drum, we have the snare top and the snare bottom. When you whack that snare drum, the sine wave will push down on the bottom microphone, so it'll compress the signal going into the bottom microphone when it's relaxing off the top one, and then when the signal comes back, it compresses the top microphone and it relaxes off the bottom. So you have this kind of inverted phase. And generally what you're trying to do when you put two microphones on an instrument, like an acoustic guitar, a grand piano, or a snare drum, is you're trying to fatten it up. But on the snare drum, what commonly happens is that those two microphones will be slightly out of phase with each other, and they, it's called comb filtering. Basically, because they're out of phase, the frequencies start to cancel each other out. It's very similar to how noise-canceling headphones work. They use negative sound waves, or they use a different type of sound wave to cancel the sound waves that you don't want. But that's happening accidentally on a snare drum when you're recording. So instead of getting a nice fat snare drum, it's actually sounding really thin and wispy. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you put two microphones on a subject and it sounds thinner than it did before, that's a huge red flag that you have a, a phase issue and you can correct it with polarity. You can also correct it by moving your microphones around, but if you've already made the recording, the quick and easy way to do it is to invert the polarity of one of those microphones or one of those audio inputs and it will solve your problem mostly kind of. There is some experimentation with it. Now, what about podcasting? You have a bunch of microphones on a table. Are you going to have this phase issue and you need to correct it with the polarity button on the Rode Roadcaster Pro 2? The quick answer is no. There's what's called a three to one rule with the phase and polarity issues that we just discussed. And it goes like this. If this microphone is within a fist of my mouth, you generally won't have phase issues if the next closest microphone is at least three times this distance from my mouth. So if this is a fist away, 
I can go one, two, three. And as long as there's not another microphone within this distance, within three fifths of my mouth, then you generally won't have a polarity or phase issue. These are some soft rules. There are always circumstances where these rules are broken, but that does give you a good heads up as to why generally, if you're using the Rode Roadcaster Pro 2 for podcasting or live streaming or video creation, like I think 99% of people use this audio mixer for, you don't really have much need to be engaging with this button. If you have two mics on an acoustic guitar and you realize that your sound got thinner instead of bigger, go ahead and turn that button on for the second one of those microphones. And you'll find that your sound does fatten up the way that you originally intended when you put two microphones on that subject. So I hope this crash course in road branding and phase and polarity has been helpful. If you do have any quick questions about any of this, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you are looking for pricing or specs for any of the equipment that we use on a regular basis, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.